Hey, my name is Caleb Crabtree, and I'm so glad that you decided to hop on our YouTube channel. This video that you're about to watch is uh, from a series that we have called The One, uh, where we're talking about relationships and dating and whether you're in a dating uh, se season right now or whether you're not. Uh, this series, I believe, will be a great help to you. I hope you enjoy this message. Well, was that good? A, a good time of worship? Yeah. Y'all yeah. excited for tonight? Yeah. Well, I'm excited. Uh, new, some new faces here. We got an exciting conversation that we started last week that we titled The One. And what we wanted to talk about is something that I believe is, is so prevalent in, uh, in your world, really in the world around us, which is the topic of dating and relationships. And Regardless of where you're at in terms of dating and relationships, whether you are currently dating or you've dated before or dating isn't even on the radar at all. You're like, no, it's not on the radar for me, Pastor Caleb. Regardless of where uh, you are in, in the conversation of relationships in your own life, whether you've dated or not or whether it's even a thought in your mind, I believe that what we're talking about can be uh, relevant to you. Why? Because when you start to date, some of the stuff that we're talking about uh, will be very helpful to you. And tonight, um, what I want to talk about, what, what I said is, is last week is that what our goal is, is to help you date well. Fair? Whether you're dating right now, whether you're not dating, what the goal is that we would try to just talk about it so that when you get to that phase in your life or that stage in your life, uh, it would be something that you can do well and, and, and kind of know how to go about it. And so I'd encourage you as we go into tonight, maybe pull out your phone, don't get distracted by all the things, but maybe take some notes of some of the things that we're going to talk about. But as we get into the conversation tonight, how many of y'all, just by show of hands, have ever been obsessed with something? Just totally obsessed with something or someone or uh, the idea of something or whatever it is, right? We can all relate to the idea of obsession. When I was in high school, uh, I was obsessed with sports, I was obsessed with basketball. The only problem about being obsessed with basketball, like in my mind, somehow uh, short little fat little me was going to end up like a pro basketball player. I don't know how, but I was obsessed with it. The only problem was is I was almost the best player at a small Christian school that never won any games, you know? So it's like, that's not really going to work for you, Pastor Caleb, you know? Uh, so, but I was totally obsessed with the idea of just like being better at this thing and putting all my energy and effort into it. Some of y'all, maybe you've played a video game before. How many of y'all video gamers? Probably looking at the guys, but some of y'all girls, you have video gamers. And you're like, you get to a level or something where you're like just totally obsessed with the fact that you cannot beat it. And it just becomes your obsession, Right? Like, I can't get past this level. I can't get past this thing. Some of y'all, how many of y'all got TikTok? Some of y'all are obsessed with, like, becoming famous on TikTok, <laughs> right? Like, you're obsessed with the idea of, like, social media influence or being known. Some of y'all have an app or a game on your phone, whatever it is. But we can all relate with what? That idea of being obsessed with something. Regardless of what it is, we've, we've at some point be, been consumed with um, something or some person or some idea. If we become obsessed with something, here's the reality. Things get stuck in our brains. Is that fair? It just gets stuck in our brains, and we can't really think about anything else. We're just kind of uh, locked into it, and this is the reality. When you're obsessed with something, it can affect a lot of your life. It can affect a lot of your life. And, and when we're talking about dating, here's the, here's the reality that's kind of prevalent in our culture is that uh, obsession is a huge conversation. Obsession is a huge 
conversation. When you get interest in someone, you're supposed to be somewhat obsessed with them. You're supposed to never stop thinking about them. No matter how hard you try, you're just, you get obsessed with a person. And, and it's totally normal, by the way, to get obsessed with something. It's a normal problem that we all have. It's a normal problem that we all uh, face. Maybe you've seen in relationships somebody that you know become totally obsessed. Any of y'all ever seen that in some of your friends? totally obsessed. It's like you have the friend who they cannot stop talking about their boot thing. Like, it's like, shut up. You know, I do not want you to keep talking about him or her anymore. Or, uh, you've got the, you've got the girls that are boy crazy. So yeah, it's okay. Y'all have to stop point fingers. Oh my gosh. You're going to start fights in the house of God. Um, <laughs> Y'all can deal with that. Some of the leaders got some turmoil got to deal with. I'm just kidding. But but you know what I'm talking about, right? Like you've had friends who have been like boy crazy or every single conversation that anybody has says, oh, that reminds me of my just beautiful Susie. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't even know. Anybody got a girlfriend named Susie, guys? I don't know. But check it out, right? We, we, we have this idea of obsession, people who get crazy about things and things become an obsession, a totally uh, just unhealthy obsession. This is the question. This is the question I want to ask. Maybe you want to jot this down is how do you know when something becomes an unhealthy obsession? Fair? How do I know in my life when something becomes an unhealthy obsession? Here's a couple that maybe, uh, you, maybe you want to jot down or maybe just even just recognize in your life. When you have somebody that you're dating and that's the only person that you ever think about ever. Like the only thing that runs through your mind ever all the time when you have somebody in your life and they're the only person that you can ever spend time with. Like you're not allowed to have friends. You're not allowed to talk to anybody else. They're the only person you have to have this like sole focus on just them. That's unhealthy when you have somebody in your life and they're the only person that you talk about. When you have somebody in your life and they just take all of your time and energy or you're just obsessed with somebody that you're attracted to. Maybe they're not even a part of your life, but you just are a secret admirer from afar, but like they're the only thing that you can think about and you're just, you're searching their social media over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And you just keep, you just keep wanting and wishing and thinking about how perfect it would be, right? If you were with them, I would suggest that that is unhealthy obsession. And maybe you, you would say, uh, why is that a bad thing? It's not like I'm a, obsessed with a number of horrible things, Pastor Caleb. It's not like I'm obsessed with going and doing a bunch of terrible things. I'm just, uh, I just have an obsession with, with this person. There could, I could be obsessed with a number of other things. But the reality is, is that the world tells us that in order to be interested and invested in somebody, you have to have an obsession with them. Is that fair? Like every movie that you watch, movies make things seem so romantic, and it seems like whenever uh, you're in a movie, a perfect relationship is one where you're obsessed with one another. Influencer couples seem like they have all of their content just together. They're obsessed with one another all of the time. As a matter of fact, in culture, total obsession is a pretty common thing. W would you guys agree with that? Uh, obsession in culture is pretty common, and then you may ask me the question, you say, well, what's wrong with me being very invested in somebody else, Pastor Caleb? Why is that a bad thing when it comes to relationship? And can I say this? Can I say this? There's nothing wrong with being excited about dating somebody. Fair? Track with me? There's nothing wrong with being excited about it. Here's the problem. When everything else in your life seems to fade away because of a person, that's a problem. It's not a problem to be excited about dating somebody or being in a relationship. It's not excited to be, it's not bad to be excited about things. But when you become so obsessed and over infatuated with somebody or something that nothing else in your life seems to exist except for that one thing, that's unhealthy and that will get very unholy very, real qu very, very quick. Let me, let me just give you a few reasons why I believe obsession with somebody or someone is not good. Number one, write these down. This is why I believe they're not good. Number one, you miss out. You miss out. There's so much of life that you get to experience in this season of your life that you will potentially miss out on if you get obsessed with one person. 
You'll miss out on things that you can do with friends. You'll miss out on things that you can do, extracurricular activities in your school. You'll miss out on things that you would do in your sports. You will miss out on an opportunity to be invested in in your family because you're so uh, just, just, I have to be with this person all the time that you'll disregard that your parents even exist sometimes. You'll get so, uh, you'll miss out on so many things, so many opportunities to learn who you are, to serve other people because you're so laser focused on one person and one thing and one idea. So you'll miss out. Number two, you'll alienate people. You'll alienate people. Can I tell you, when you get in a relationship and you become that person who like no longer makes friends a priority, all your friends realize that. Like, like when, when, when you become that person, or, or, and we all know that person where it's like, okay, as soon as they get with somebody, it's probably going to end in a month, but for that month, we're not seeing them. Y'all track with me? Everybody knows that person. Some of us may be that person. I don't know. But you'll alienate people, and people notice when they're no longer a priority in your life. They feel distance. They feel separation. And here's the thing. Eventually, that takes a huge toll on relationships. And can I tell you the third one? You'll lose yourself. If you become so obsessed with somebody else, you'll, you'll be trying to find ways to make you fit into their box. You'll, you'll, you'll be trying to find ways where you, you lose your sense of identity and uniqueness. You spend less time focusing on the things that you enjoy, the things that bring you energy, the things that you love, the things that you care about. Why? Because you, you, you're just, you, you end up trying to be somebody that you're not to impress somebody that wants you to be something that you aren't. You will lose you. And here's the thing. There's no judgment if you've done that. There's no judgment if you are doing that. But at the end of the day, what I, what I said last week and what I will, will continue to proclaim through the course of this series is I want to help you date well. I want to help you date well. And this is what I would say about obsession. I want to help you tonight not let obsession with someone, write this down. I want to help you not let obsession with someone or something make you miss out on all of the things that are pivotal during these years of your life. I want to help you. I'll check it out in relationships. I want to help you uh, not let obsession uh, with someone or something make you miss out on all of the things that are going to happen during these pivotal years of your life. So we want to look at, I'm going to look at the book of Proverbs tonight. <clears throat> And can, I, can I say this about obsession real quick before we get into the text? Um, we don't just get obsessed with people. We get obsessed with things. So, so some of us may struggle with the obsession of like a significant other and like a boyfriend or a girlfriend or whatever. But some of, some of you in the room may not struggle with that because like dating is not really on your mind. But you may be so obsessed with your sport that church becomes no priority to you during sports season. Or some of you may be so obsessed with your academics and your success that like the things of God have no meaning to you on a day-to-day -day basis because you're so obsessed with something that you have in front of you. Obsession affects things in our life because we're obsessed with things, but we can also be obsessed with people. Proverbs uh, chapter 25, verse 16, we looked at the book of Proverbs. It it's a wisdom book from King Solomon where we're going to look at what he says tonight. Really? Really? Really, Proverbs chapter 25, verse 16 says this. If you find honey, eat just enough, too much of it, and you will vomit. Check it out. Check it out. What, what Solomon is saying in this passage of scripture is the idea of moderation, right? The idea of moderation. Basically, here's the thing. You and I can, ha can, have, uh, can be invested in a good thing. But if you get too invested in a good thing, what ends up happening is it ends up being a bad thing. A good thing can start out as a good thing, but then you get too much of it, and that good thing then ends up becoming a bad thing. So you and I can recognize that even good things in our life can become bad things when we become obsessed with them and we don't take them in moderation. Are you fair? Are you guys tracking with me? We, we, a good thing can become a bad thing very quickly, and we have to be wise enough to recognize where is the line in my life? Where does something that is good in the beginning become something that is bad because I don't know how to take it in moderation? Let's look at what the Apostle Paul writes in the book of Ephesians. 
uh, when, when he says uh, something along the same lines to the, in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15, it says this, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as, what's that word? Wise. We, we have to be careful about how we live. Check out what the apostle Paul is saying. He's saying, pay attention to how you live your life. Pay attention to how you live your life on a daily basis. Don't just let life happen, happen to you. Be intentional with where you know lines are in your life where you're not getting too much of a, 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 of a, of a, a good thing to become a bad thing because you don't know where to draw the line. You don't know how to not be obsessed with it or take it in moderation or whatever that is. We have to be very careful with the way that you and I live our lives. Why? Because we have to live in wisdom. When it comes to the conversation of dating, using words like wise and unwise is absolutely perfect. Check this out. Wisdom, I want to say this. Wisdom is different between right than than it wis, let me really say this the way I wrote it. Wisdom is different than deciding between right and wrong. Fair? Wisdom is different than just deciding between right things and wrong things. Write this down. Wisdom, true wisdom, is asking what is the best. I can take a right thing and it become a wrong thing if I'm unwise with the way that I use it in my life. Tracking? It's not that it's a bad thing in the start, but I don't steward it well. I don't use it well. I don't go about it well. And so then all of a sudden it becomes a toxic and unhealthy thing when it wasn't a bad thing to begin with. Fair? And, and, and we, we need to be wise, and what wisdom is is not necessarily saying this is right and this is wrong, although that is a part of wisdom, but true wisdom is saying what is best for me in this situation. It's not necessarily bad for you to do a particular thing, but at the end of the day, you can make that a bad thing, like dating. Let me use dating. It's not necessarily bad that you would date, fair? But dating can become very toxic very quick, if you don't go about it the right way. So maybe you know in your life, I shouldn't date yet. That's not wise for me, but it may be wise for the person who's next to you. I don't know. Your life is different than their life. You have to ask what is best. Check this out. <clears throat> Pay attention to what you do, and then you make the wisest choice about that. A couple of questions when it comes to uh, dating. At what point does an unhealthy interest in somebody become an, un, an, un, an unhealthy and unwise obsession? And then ask yourself the question, where am I currently when it comes to the conversation of dating? And how will I choose to date? I want to look at this for a second because we can let interest become obsession very, very quick. Interest can become obsession very, very quick. We could start out by just following somebody on Instagram. That's interest, fair? We could start out and it's just like, okay, I just want to follow them. I just want to see a little bit more about them. I just want to become their friend on social media, whatever it is. I want to, uh, I want to follow them. That's just general interest. There's nothing unwise about following somebody on, interest, uh, on, on Instagram. But what is interest at first becomes obsession, throw it up on the screen, when you begin to like everything that it is they post, you comment on everything that it is that they say. You've got to go back and like all the pictures that when they first started Instagram, and those are all the weird ones that you shouldn't go back and look at anyways because nobody knew how to use Instagram when they first got it. But what started as interest with somebody then became an unhealthy obsession where it just was toxic and unhealthy and the only thing that is on your mind. Another thing, another thing of interest. Nate, throw it up on the screen. Another thing of interest, hanging out, right? There's nothing wrong or unwise about hanging out with somebody. Spending some time with somebody, going to a movie with somebody, going putt-putt, whatever it is. I don't know what y'all do, hanging out, chilling, whatever. There's nothing wrong. That's general interest, but it becomes an obsession, right, when you cancel friend plans with every single friend that you have. You never do anything else. It's the only thing that you ever do, the only thing that you ever participate in. Paul continues in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16. He says this, make the most of every opportunity. Why? Because days are evil. You may ask the question about that text of scripture, what does that really mean? What does it mean that days are evil? In the original language, what Paul says literally means 
annoying, difficult, or time-consuming. In other words, you and I can be so consumed with something that it everything else wastes away because of the, the fact that we're so over-invested in this one other thing. And we don't even necessarily know that it's happening. We have the, 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 the tendency uh, to let other things in our life waste away at the pursuit of something else. And it could start out, like I said, it could start out as a good thing, not necessarily a bad thing, but we have to be wise about the way that we handle it. Check this out. Check this out. Check this out. <clears throat> I want to summarize everything Paul said briefly, okay? You all tracking with me? Just going to say a couple more things, a couple more things. Don't make anyone your everything. Write that down. Don't make anyone your everything. There is no person that should become your absolute everything when it comes to dating. Even when it comes to your marriage, no one should become your absolute everything. That's the way that we have to, we have to get this healthily set in our minds is that like, like dating isn't about making somebody my absolute everything and just writing everything else off. And that's the only thing that I, I ever pursue or the only thing that I ever do. I'm not supposed to make anybody my absolute everything. Fair? We've got to get that set right in our minds. If your dating life holds you back from the rest of your life, it is toxic. If, if, if you're dating and the only thing that you ever do is, is that dating life and that's the only box that you live in, it's time for you to rethink the way that you date. It's time for you to rethink the way that you look at things. If you are totally obsessed, you got to just reframe your mind around the way that we ought to pursue it. Here's what that looks like. What does it look like to, to make somebody your absolute everything? If, if, if you're currently in a relationship, don't abandon the rest of the world around you. It's not unwise to prioritize a relationship whatsoever. But at the same time, don't ditch your friends. Don't abandon your family. Don't uh, lose sight of the things that you enjoy. Can I tell you this? If you're, if you're currently in a relationship, how many are currently in a relationship? Just curious. Handful of you. Okay. Some of y'all dating. Some can I tell you that before you started dating that, that person, there was a whole, a whole you that was you before you started dating them. You didn't become who you were when you started dating whoever that is. You were a whole person before that person ever came into your life. So don't lose, don't lose what you enjoy, what, you, what matters to you, what you value, what you love. Let things that matter to you and that, that add value to you and things that you just love and enjoy and want to partake in, still enjoy those things. Don't become somebody else. Can I, can I say this? I'm going to say this, and I, this, this pertains to everybody, whether you're dating or not. If you've got to be somebody else in order to be with somebody else, that person is not your somebody else. I'm going to say that again because there's a lot of somebody else's there. If you as an individual, in order to be with somebody, has to turn into somebody that you're not, that ain't the person for you. You should be able to bring you into a relationship and not have to change, not have to be somebody different, not have to just like totally abandon all your interests in order to pursue a person. And can I tell you, it's not somebody you should date, let alone somebody you should marry. If you've got to change who you are in order to be with somebody else. Number two, if you aren't dating anyone, stop thinking that your life cannot start until you start dating. I'm going to say that again. If you aren't dating anyone, stop thinking that your life cannot start until you start dating. Go do you. Go grow in your relationship with God. Go meet with Jesus and become who you're supposed to become in Christ. Go hang out with friends. Enjoy your life. Don't go and be crazy, like, but, but just go have fun. Go uh, in, enjoy life and have fun and make wise decisions and grow in your relationship with God and make more friendships and, 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 and do more things and play sports and come be invested in your youth group. You're, it's not like your life is, is, has not started because some of your friends are dating people and you're not. And I believe that's like a huge lie in culture is that somehow like we're only significant if we have a significant other. 
That's like garbage. Three, let me write this down. Write this down. Trust God with the future of your relationships. Trust God with the future of your relationships. God's got something far better for you than you have for yourself. And sometimes you think that you need something when you need something, but if you would just trust God's timing, he's got a significantly better plan. Trust God with your relationships. If you're not with somebody, that's fine. Maybe God's got something completely different for you, but you think, I got to have this person, or I got to be with this person. Can I tell you that the majority of relationships that you are in high school, they don't end in marriage. That actually might need to change the way that some of you pursue purity in relationships because you need to realize that you're with somebody else's wife or you're with somebody else's husband, and you ought to treat them different. Trust God with the future of your relationships, and it doesn't have to come packaged the way that you think it needs to come packaged because you've bought into what culture says about you needing to have somebody in order to be somebody. That's just not true. That's trash. I'm about truth, not trash. Trust God with relationships because here's the thing. Check it out. God is looking out for you, and he sees the bigger picture that you don't. Fair? Number four. Ask somebody that you trust if you are obsessed. I'm going to tell you the most wise thing that you can, you can do for the rest of your life. Okay? I want you to lean into this. This is for dating. This is for, for everything that you're going to do for the remainder of your life. Are y'all leaning into this? Because uh, y'all need to walk away with this tonight. Have somebody that can tell you who you're becoming. Have somebody who knows you well enough to say you're not making wise choices and it doesn't matter what they say because you trust them, their relationship with God, and they will hold you accountable. Have somebody on the outside of your, of your life that is looking into your life with, with, with enough of an examination to say you're not online. You're not walking straight. You're not pursuing life in a way that is godly. You're not being wise in the way that you're living. And it doesn't matter what they say, regardless of how hard it is for you to hear, you're going to take it in because you trust that they're walking with God and they're going to hold you accountable. The way that that pertains to relationships is, is if you have somebody in your life who is walking outside of your life that is able to look at your relationship and say you are obsessed and you're throwing all your friends away and you don't care about anything else, you're being disrespectful to your family and you are so caught up and infatuated with this person and you are obsessed. You better have somebody on the outside of your relationship that if they say that to you, you're not gonna be like, you don't understand, but we just love one another. <laughs> Me and Billy are gonna get married. <laughs> We've been dating for like two minutes. Check it out. Some of y'all laugh at that, but some teenage relationships, I'm just going to say, are that stupid. And check it out. Check it out. You will throw away, you got to listen to this, you will throw away the wise counsel that God has put on the outside of your life to look at the inside of your life because you don't want to hear what they have to say because you know it's true, but you don't want to believe it. For the rest of your life, I promise you, you need to have somebody who can tell you the hard things because you know that they're saying it because they love you. Are y'all re- did y'all did y'all hear that? I promise that's the wisest that's the wisest advice I could give you for the rest of your life. Have have somebody who examines your life and helps you put things back into perspective. All right. I'm going to end with this. <clears throat> I'm going to end with this, and I'm just going to say, don't make anybody your everything. Don't make anybody your everything. I'm going to call Emily and Pierce back up, and I'm going to have a couple leaders who are going to stand here as we go into a time uh, of worship. But every, every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. When I say don't make anybody your everything, I'm talking about people. Don't make anybody that you're dating your everything. Don't make don't make uh, another person your everything. Don't make uh, an event or a sport or whatever. Don't make those things your everything. But what I do want to tell you tonight, 
for some of you sitting in the room, the foundational starting place for relationships, though, is making Jesus Christ your everything. And if you're sitting in a seat and you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want you to understand this. And I'm just going to say it as straightforward as I can. Tonight, you don't have life. You're walking around trying to do things by your own strength, by your own power, by your own might, and that, that'll only take you so far. And I don't know the condition of each and every one of your hearts. I don't know where you stand before Jesus Christ tonight, but what the Bible says is that he stands at the door of your heart and he knocks. And what the Bible says is that you and I, that, 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 that you and I are sinners, that everyone in the world, we all have sinned and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. That, that every single one of us, I'm a sinner, you're a sinner, we're all sinners. Maybe you've heard that before, maybe you haven't, but we're all sinners falling short of the glory of God. And Jesus Christ left heaven and he died on a cross that you and I deserve to die on. Why? So that you and I could have life because the penalty for that sin that we're all we've all fallen to is that we all deserve to die. So Jesus Christ died in that place for you and for me. And I'll tell you tonight that the greatest decision that I have ever made in my entire life was placing faith in Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that if you and I would recognize that we're sinners and we would confess that with our mouth and we would believe in our heart that Jesus Christ died and he rose from the grave and he conquered sin, hell, and the grave, that if you and I would confess that and we would believe that in our heart, that we can be saved. Well, hey, I really hope that you enjoyed this message from our series, the one where we're talking about relationships and dating. We would love to see you in person uh, if you're in 6th through 12th grade. Uh, on Sunday nights from 6 to 9 p.m.